Freedom Munitions X Def ammunition. I've had a lot of requests to test this ammunition, particularly a 9mm, and I will get to that. But today I'm testing their 10mm and their 357 SIG ammunition. So X Def by Freedom Munitions. And they're not a gold dot, and they're not a Winchester Ranger or anything like that. They kind of look like a hybrid between both, but I'm not really sure what they are, to be honest. Our 10 millimeter is a 200 grain. It's rated at 1,100 feet per second. I had to look this up on their website to write this down. 1,100 feet per second is its rating. And our 357 SIG is a 124 grain. It's rated at 1,350 feet per second. Now with this particular round on their website, it did say they were using a four inch barrel. And what I'm gonna to use today is a five inch barrel, my MMP 2.0 with our KKM 357 SIG conversion barrel. And to test the 10 millimeter, I'm gonna use my four inch barrel Smith & Wesson 610 revolver because you know that's my most reliable 10 millimeter and we have about the same amount of barrel travel in a four inch revolver versus five inch semi-auto so we're gonna see what we get so I'm gonna go through the chronograph see what kind of velocity and accuracy I get at the same time then I'm gonna do my 10% clear ballistic test so we're gonna go into plain clear ballistics to see what the best potential of those cartridges are no denim or anything like that to clog a hollow point we'll see a very best potential then after that we're gonna do our real-world simulation where I have four layers of denim on this first three inch piece that represents our pectoral muscle after that we'll have a quarter inch medium density fiber board that represents hitting ribs or sternum and then the clear ballistics gel block, that'll be more of our real world simulation. We'll see how they compare. And then I'm gonna do uh, some accuracy drills at my steel target. See what kind of practical accuracy I can get with these. So let's get started with this test. All right, first up, I'm gonna test our 10 millimeter auto through my Smith & Wesson 610 revolver. And because these are semi-auto cartridges that I'm running through a revolver, I do wanna check for some bullet creep. So I did color one of these uh, case mouths and the bullet to see if we get any creep out under recoil. That can happen sometimes with revolvers because we don't have a, uh, a roll crimp on there like a revolver cartridge. So 10 millimeter first up, we're rated at 1100 feet per second. Let's see what I get in my revolver here. About five yards from that target. One thousand ninety five. One thousand ninety eight. I'm checking for a bullet creep out. None so far. So that's good. Sometimes it's hard to reload these things, these moon clips once you fire a couple rounds. One thousand sixty. 1081 last cartridge here no bullet creep out whatsoever with with these so I'm gonna fire this last round here see what it gives me 1061 so at first we had very consistent velocity and then we started dropping a couple uh, rounds there where it's a little bit lower but it's still pretty close to rate of velocity and because you're getting some cylinder gap loss you know generally that revolver gives about the same number for velocity as a 4.6 inch Glock 20 so not too bad overall for what we're seeing there for our velocity now our 357 sig right at 1350 feet per second they were specific that it was a four inch barrel so let's see how close i get to 1350 in my five inch barrel here Read. Go a little closer to the sensors here. Thirteen seventy. Thirteen seventy six. Fourteen twelve. 1387, 1386, 1379. So even though it's just a tad above rate of velocity, I was expecting a little bit greater because generally the 1350 rated stuff uh, out of my five inch barrel will 
get you know around 1450 so it is a little bit light but we still got rate of velocity so let's set our ballistics gel block see how these compare all right and the plain clear ballistics are our best potential here's our 10 millimeter auto all right set that with our 357 sig let's go take a look All right, so here's our first three inches, our 10 millimeter on the bottom, our 357 SIG on top. That's to be expected with a much faster velocity. We have a little more entrance damage there. But our you know, damage path tracks here are pretty similar between both of these. But we did get a little more penetration with our 357 SIG, which I was kind of thinking it would be the opposite, that because we have that momentum of the heavy bullet, maybe the bullet wouldn't expand huge and we'll just keep trucking along but it looks like it did pretty good overall a 10 millimeter pretty good damage here the bullet did roll back in that channel and that typically happens mostly with the really large large expanded hollow points that get you know somewhere over 65 one hundredths of an inch 70 one hundredths of an inch or bigger I, I generally see that type of thing where it's open enough for the bullet to roll back but what we got going on there is about 15 and a quarter inches of penetration for that bullet channel. So pretty uh, good penetration. Now with our 357 SIG, we also, we have good expansion with both of these. We got about 17 and a quarter with our 357 SIG. So I'd say our 357 SIG and our 10 millimeter both did fantastic here. I, you know, between the two of these, I think maybe our 357 SIG looks a little better. But uh, let's put on our denim, put in our MDF before I call it, and uh, see how the uh, denim and rib simulation affect these. All right, more of our real world simulation. Four layers of denim, three inches of clear ballistics, a quarter inch medium density fiberboard rib simulation. So let's see what our 10 millimeter does here. Set that back up, we'll hit it with the uh, 357 SIG now. All right, 357 SIG, real world simulation. Let's see what this does. We'll take a look so it does look like this mdf lifted up on that first shot and i didn't push it back down so our impacts are close to each other but uh, they did not impact each other so that's still a fair um, impact of that with both of these so interesting what i'm seeing here um, it's hard to see the channel of the 357 sig in fact let me hit it one more time with the 357 sig because this might not be valid because it did go into the 10 millimeter channel all right one more attempt i did aim really high on that so i don't know why it went so low so see if i can get a higher shot here let's go take a look All right, so that made a big difference there. And this thing flew down, it's all dirty, so it's hard to see through that now. Uh, and our medium density fiber board, about the same impact as what we had in the first shot there. So there is a difference in penetration. And I, a lot of times, a lot of people say that I'm shooting in the same channel because the parallax of the camera angle makes it look like that when I am not at all even close to the same channel. You know, it's like people will say this top channel, I shot the same one as the other top channel because it's lined up the same height, but they don't look at it from here like, well, duh, <laughs> this is not the same channel as this. It's away from a couple inches, but for some reason they don't understand three-dimensional. <laughs> but what we got going on here is with our 10 millimeter, no expansion at all. We had a whole bunch of damage from tumbling, but I did not expect this at all. With that really big expansion we got in the plane gel, I for sure thought that bullet was designed enough that it would expand fine through denim. It had enough power and all that, but no, no expansion whatsoever. We're looking at 
about 24 and a half inches of penetration. Our good shot with our 357 SIG where it didn't impact this other channel here, we got really good damage here and we got a penetration of about 16, right about, about 16 and a half inches, really good expansion. So it's different than our first shot. That first shot got about 19 inches and it only partially expanded, but that's because it's not encountering, you know, as much resistance as what it should have been. So looking at this, you know, it looks like this bullet might be an okay design, but it's limited on, you know, its velocity and power because, you know, our 357 SIG did fine. 10 millimeter really didn't do that good at all. So let's pull these out of the block. We'll take a close up look at them. Now I'll shoot our steel, see what kind of practical accuracy I can get with these. All right, so here's a close up look at these bullets here. Here is our 10 millimeter through our plain gel. Really big expansion. I had some high hopes for this. And it, it is designed very much like a gold dot from what I can tell. Doesn't really look like a true jacketed bullet. It looks like sort of one of those thick plating styles that uh, Spear does. It does have a gold dot in the middle, but it's not a Spear gold dot. Now 357 SIG, this is the back of the bullet. Those pedals really peeled back. Here's the front. Really big expansion with our 357 SIG also. So in plain gel, they did fantastic. And this is definitely why I do this testing um, through our denim MDF. Here's that first shot with that 357 SIG where it encountered that 10 millimeter channel. Uh, didn't do particularly well. A 10 millimeter, here we are through MDF and denim. I don't know if I can get a close up look at that bullet nose, but it has a very similar style to like a Winchester Ranger. And it's not even clogged with denim, so the denim kicked out and it still did not expand. Now our 357 SIG going through the MDF with our good shot here where we did not encounter the other channel performed very well actually performed i would say better than what it did through our plain gel because it didn't over expand and peel those pedals back so for our terminal ballistics our uh, 357 sig did quite well our 10 millimeter i can't trust this because at the end of the day this is what i'm looking at through denim and rib simulation that's what we're going to get so 357 SIG did a little bit better. So let's close up look at those. All right, I'm 25 yards from the target. I'm just gonna fire these off as fast as I think I can hit the target, see what I can do with these. So here's our 10 millimeter. All right, 357 SIG. I have no idea where that first shot went, to be honest. Um, definitely a little bit less recoil in our 357 SIG, even though our 10 millimeters fired through a very heavy revolver. So let me back it up and keep shooting. All right, 75 yards from the target just for fun, but also, you know, 10 millimeter and 357 SIG should have a good ability to reach out there far and hit pretty hard at distance. So let's see what I can do with our 10 millimeter here at 75 yards. All right, so that last shot I think was coincidental. It's not because I fired single action. Um, what I saw was, you know, downrange parallax looks different to you guys than what it does to me. Um, they were basically hitting all over and that last hit was very, very low. So let me aim kind of high with this. So I had to aim at the head on that silhouette to make those hits. So 
before that I was aiming center and I just coincidentally was hitting some right, some left. So I wasn't able to really consistently tell that it was consistently hitting low. So 357 seg, let's see if I can get this. So I'm not sure if that downrange camera picked this up. Probably not. It probably didn't pick it up correctly. A lot of you guys will know me and will know it's not me. Because what I'm going to tell you is absolutely nuts. Um, some of the shots were hitting above the target to the right and up maybe two, three feet above the target. I had some that hit about 12 feet below the target and to the left. Like something was wrong with those bullets that they were hitting like that. I don't see anything like that. Generally, I miss because it's me. You're going to see impacts, or I'm going to see impacts that are just barely below the target, maybe to the right or to the left by, you know, six inches a foot. Not 12 feet down and low. There's no way I could have pulled it that far off unless this is the first time I've ever fired a handgun before. So, very wonky accuracy with these. I don't understand that at all, so... What I'm going to say here is I would not recommend this ammunition for obvious reasons. Um, our 10 millimeter couldn't even defeat denim and expand. That, that, that's concerning because 10 millimeter is an extremely powerful cartridge. And even at the lower power we were working with, you know, of over 500 foot pounds of energy still, it should have expanded because a 40 Smith on Wesson that's, you know, that powerful will expand so i'm going to chalk it up to uh bullet design there something wrong going on there a 357 sig there was enough velocity to expand it and did really well in our terminal ballistic testing but i think that miss at 25 yards even had some of this wonky accuracy issues going on i don't understand why that was so far off so you know, I picked up a bunch of this Freedom Munitions x stuff ammo. I got some in 380, 38 Special, 357 Magnum, 9 millimeter, as well as this 10 millimeter 357 uh, SIG. So I'm not going to call it right now and be like, oh, it's terrible, because I still have a lot of it to test. But from the get-go, I'm very unimpressed so far. So that's what you get today with our 357 SIG versus 10 millimeter x stuff ammunition. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.